All right. Sweet smell of plastic. Hey everyone. So here's a really short video about how to spin weld, which if you've purchased, you know, any kind of water tanks that look like this, they're kind of the opaque white, you know, you can get really big like fresh water tanks. Um, these are made of polyethylene and any of the factory fittings that come pre-installed, um, they're done with a technique called spin welding. I think being able to install your own fittings anywhere you want on the tank is really helpful to have just a really durable and space efficient design. So today I'll just quickly cover what you need to make this happen and how to install them. Now the concept is really simple. You essentially drill a hole and then you have one of these fittings that before installation looks something like this. And then you just spin it so fast in this hole that that friction along the seam here uh, causes the plastic to melt. And then once that fitting and that spinning motion is stopped, then that plastic re-solidifies and you've essentially welded a fitting into that hole. So what do you need to get this done? Well, if we put this tank aside, the two things that are critical is you're gonna need a router and I've got two routers here for this demonstration. And then the other thing you need are these kind of specialized driving tools. And each of these you buy, they will essentially be made and sized to mate with a different size fitting. So I've got this one here that installs half inch fittings. And then I've got this one that installs one inch fittings. And for the vans, oh, one inch fittings. Uh oh, oh, there we go. This one that installs one inch fittings. And for the vans that I build, um, that's basically the only two sizes I use. If you are doing maybe like a black water system where you need like a nice big pipe to get those turds down there, um, you probably would want an even bigger fitting. Now, each of these fittings uh, is pretty expensive. You know, these smaller ones are about 50, 60 bucks, and then they go upwards from there. This one was about $90 to buy at the time I bought it. And if you are only doing this once, this is maybe kind of a hard pill to swallow. I mean, that's quite a bit of money just to, you know, locate some fittings. But I think this is just far and away the most durable method for locating fittings on your tank. It's what the factory does. You can buy some like adhesive based and even fastener based, like fastener relocation kits they're called. Um, they'll run you about 10 to $20 per fitting if you get a quality one but I still think that those seem just a lot more finicky to me. Some of them require you to like drill a large hole in a different part of the tank so you can access the inside of the tank. Um, so far and away, this is just the fastest and most durable way to do it. And if you ever do have a leak in one of your water tanks, I bet at that point, you know, shelling out the cash for one of these fittings up front will definitely seem worth it. All right, so as I said, I can get through my whole installation just using these two sizes. And I really like this because if you watch other spin welding videos out there, and there are a few, um, what people will do is they will actually take a router and they will remove this kind of plunge base and I'll see them and they'll essentially just chuck this up like this. Um, you know, they will essentially, I'll watch them, they'll come up to the hole and they'll just plunge the fitting like this with no plunge collar or plunge base on the router. And I have tried this a little bit and I'll show it, demonstrate a little footage towards the end of the video, but I think it is a much more just relaxing, um, and kind of stable process if you actually do use a plunge base on your router once you've got this clicked on here then once you've got your hole drilled you can line this up on the tank where you want it and then you can just plunge it wherever you need so that is how i have done most of my installations and then since i only use these two smaller fittings this larger driving tool that has a half inch shank so you can't really use a trim router on these because those only have a quarter inch shank this one actually fits in my larger router um, and it's, as you can see, it can clear this base. So that makes it nice and stable because even with this bigger fitting, I can still use this plunge router to install my fittings. And then speaking of the installation process, it really is that easy. You know, you just find where you want to locate your fitting. You drill a hole uh, kind of corresponding with whatever size fitting you're going to be installing. And then you just put these in your router and then you start her up. You'll quickly see a puddle start to form around the fitting as you're plunging it in and you want to give it at least a couple seconds when that's happening. Your goal essentially is on these fittings there's a flange right here and ideally you would get this about flush with the surface of the tank. Now I err on the side of maybe slightly under driving it so this flange is maybe just slightly proud of anything because if you do go too far you will just blow this fitting through the side of your tank. But you definitely want to give it a couple seconds to really let that puddle form and just get a lot of like nice molten plastic there because then once you stop the router, things start to cool pretty fast and I've never tried it, but I would guess restarting the router is probably not a great idea. Uh, but yeah, once things cool, this is just, you know, a welded, just like seamless fitting in here now and it's extremely durable. 
there's not many other tips I have to give. Um, I have found that if you've used a Sharpie to mark the location of your fittings, I would you know, erase that with some like rubbing alcohol before you actually start the welding process. Um, I think otherwise that molten plastic can kind of get dyed a color or stained and it just looks a little less professional even though I don't think it probably has any sort of like structural consequences. And besides that, that's it. Now here, let me just show you that quick footage I have of me trying to install one of these fittings again without that plunge base. Uh, the position I've got this water tank in on my bench, you know, I just can't really get very good stabilization on where I've got that router, but it just doesn't go very well. You know, and here it is again. So for me, I just choose to use a plunge router. I think it just makes it a very predictable and kind of stable process. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little quickie here. And um, yeah, thanks again for watching as always.